one woman refused to accept the status quo. In 1865, a young Emily Stowe applied for admission to the University of Toronto's School of Medicine. She was denied simply because she was a woman. At that moment, Emily Stowe committed to doing everything in her power to ensure that one day, women would be able to study and practice medicine in Canada. She obtained her medical degree in the U.S. and returned to Toronto as Canada's first practicing woman doctor. In 1883, a new door for women was opening with the founding of Women's Medical College, the realization of Emily's dream. It was the first place in Canada where women could study and practice medicine. This was the beginning of the healthcare revolution. The women that went before me found their place, but I will never forget what Dr. Edna Guest said. She was one of the brilliant women before me. And she said, now, Marion, there are a few things you must know. One of them is this. If you're asked to go in the back door, don't refuse. Someday you'll go in the front door. Well, do you think that the day will come that all women doctors can go in the front door? They can now. We've come so far, but there's still so much to do. So many barriers to break down, so many doors to open. For the last eight years of my post-secondary school training, I've actually been the only black student in my class. It's not only made it more difficult to find mentorship, but also to find solidarity and allyship in times where I believe I faced discrimination. My third year of medical school, during my clerkship, clinical rotations, I had an encounter with a patient who asked me to leave the room because they did not believe that as a black woman I could also be a part of the medical team. I thought that if I wanted to pursue a career in health sciences, it was become a doctor. I never, I never knew that research and, you know, research on communities, underserved communities actually existed. I think meeting mentors earlier in my life would have made me feel a lot more supportive and also would have opened my eyes to all these opportunities. I think I had a very narrow view of what careers could be. Being a woman and also someone who is a person of color, um, these two identities um, definitely have intersected in my life um, and have sometimes made me feel like I need to work twice as hard as anybody else to try to prove myself. Um, and it can often be quite intimidating to be in a space where you don't look like anyone else in the room um, and really having to constantly remind yourself and everyone there that you deserve to be there. We're harnessing the power of education and mentorship to ensure our scientists represent all women. We want to ensure that women across Canada will benefit from groundbreaking research conducted by diverse and empowered health researchers. Beginning with our summer student program and with the support of our donors, we'll offer financial and mentorship support to engage, retain and advance women and individuals from underrepresented communities in the health sciences. Through awareness and outreach, we'll connect with women who may be on the brink of believing the barriers they face are too great to pursue their dreams. Medicine thrives with diversity, and you can bring that unique perspective and lens that really enriches the experience for everyone. The importance of mentorship is having someone else see what you can't. And my professor saw something in me that I really couldn't because I didn't have the resources and tools to see. With a diverse body of scientists who represent women everywhere, we can discover, address, and close the health gaps that are putting women's lives and well-being at risk. I am opening the doors for all women. I am standing on the shoulders of giants. I am closing health gaps. I am representing my community. I am an ally. I am mentoring the next generation. I am the next generation of women scientists. I am black girl magic personified. I am the future. We, we are, are women. women.